Hello everyone, thank you so much for attending this talk. I am Said Mohamed Javad Said Talebi from UC Irvine. I conducted this research with collaboration of researchers from UC Irvine, UC Riverside, and Atlassian. Today, I'm going to talk about undo workaround for kernel bugs. First, let's see what the problem is that we try to solve. Kernel bugs are important and dangerous. Even their simplest one can crash the system and cause a system reboot. They might even result in system hang or UI freeze, and in some cases, they might result in exploitable data corruptions. When someone finds a kernel bug and reports it to kernel developers, they fix the bug and release a fixing patch for the users to deploy. However, this process is mainly manual and it takes a lot of time. Unpatched kernel bugs can cause reliability and security problems. In addition, they can damage the kernel fuzzing performance. They waste the fuzzer's resources by getting triggered again and again. Currently, two approaches are used to tackle the unpatched bug problem. The first one is to disable the buggy code component, for example, the buggy function or the entire kernel module. And the second one is to develop a quick but incomplete fix for the bug. Code disabling has been deployed by Talos. Talos is a paper published in Oakland 2016. However, these approaches approaches suffer from serious drawbacks. Since they modify the kernel, the system's functionality can uh, be lost or they can result in unexpected behavior. In addition, code disabling for sure limits the code coverage of fuzzing and dirty patching uh, for sure needs significant uh, manual effort. Our idea to solve this problem is to provide an undo workaround for kernel box. To show our idea, first let's have a closer look at the kernel box. Let's assume a user space application, for example a fuzzer, start interacting with the kernel by issuing system calls. After issuing several successful system calls, one system call might trigger a bug. Because this system call is half executed, the system is in an unexpected state and the kernel cannot continue execution. What normally kernel does is to reboot the system in this kind of situation. Our idea is to undo all the side effects of this half executed system call and put the system back in an expected state. This way, without losing the functionality, the system could serve the following system calls. An important question here is how to undo the in-flight system call. Our idea to undo in-flight system call is to use existing error handling code in the kernel. Let's see what are the existing error handling code in the kernel. The following example is a sample pseudocode for a function in the kernel. As you can see in this function, there are some local statements. This statement can be arithmetic operations on local variables or function calls which do not change the state of software or hardware. Also, we can have some state mutating statements. These statements can be operations on global variables or function calls that change the state of the hardware or software. In addition, we have some functions that the developer expects them to fail sometimes. Developers designed error handling code to handle these expected failures. Our main idea in this paper is to repurpose these code to also handle unexpected errors. Now I'm going to talk about the design of our system. In our solution, when a bug gets triggered, instead of rebooting the system, we execute a bonot to undo the last system call. I'm going to explain how bonots work with an example. The code you see is part of a function in GPU driver of Pixel 3 form. I'm going to show you how we instrument this function with a bonot. The first item we need to add is the bonot itself. Bonot contains statements that undo the effect of the state mutating statements of the function. We add the bonot to the end of the function. Bonot should only get executed when a bug gets triggered, so we put the bonot in an always false condition. 
However, we add conditional go to jumps after functions statements to redirect the execution to the beginning of the bonnet when a bug gets triggered. Finally, use a pair mask to keep track of execution of a state mutating statements. This way, we make bonnets control flow sensitive. Now, let's see the bonnet workflow in runtime. Let's assume the user space application passed null as the last argument to this function. So the variable param become null as a result. The first statement to execute in this function is this mutex lock. The conditional jump after the mutex lock does not have any effect because the bonnet flag is false. Then here, we set the second bit of our pair mask to 1, which shows that we, execute the mute, we executed the mutex lock. Here, the null pointer dereference causes an exception. Instead of rebooting the system, we call our exception handler, which sets the bonnet flag to true. Our exception handler then returns the execution to the next instruction. As you can see, the next instruction is the conditional jump. Since the flag is true, conditional go to redirects the execution to the beginning of the bonnet. Here we reset the bonnet flag, so statements in the bonnet can execute normally. Because the second bit of our mask is 1, it shows that the mutex lock has been executed and, executed and we need to undo it. But here, since the first bit of our mask is 0, we do nothing. Finally, we set the bonnet flag again and return. This way, we do the cleanup recursively for all the parent functions. Bonnets can be generated either manually or automatically. Hecaton is a static analysis tool we develop that automatically generates bonnets. We observe that existing error handling code in the kernel follows certain patterns. For example, a comparison of integer value with zero inside an if condition. So Hecaton uses pattern matching to find these statements. Hecaton matches the pair of state mutating and their undo statements use similarity of these statements strings. In addition, to increase Hecaton's accuracy, we generate a function per database for the whole kernel and we manually inspect and verify this database. Having this database of error handling functions helps us to find these statements even when they are outside if and else error handling blocks. Hecaton, however, does not always produce complete bonnets, which can result in incomplete system called undo. We identified six major factors contributing to this incompleteness and discussed them in our paper. We quantify these factors and from them build a confidence score. Each factor contributes to bonnets incompleteness differently. We use real bugs to tune and adjust the coefficients of the confidence score. Now let's see the effectiveness of our solution. We tested the effectiveness of bonnets on 113 bugs in three different experiments. On nine real bugs and CVEs of the Android kernel. For 30 bugs in the Linux kernel, which they were unpatched at the time we did our experiments. And also, we injected 74 bugs into the Android kernel. We can see that the bonnets can mitigate the vulnerabilities in almost all these cases and also outperform Talos in all experiments. In addition, as opposed to code disabling, bonnets do a good job in preserving systems functionality after bug mitigation. As we can see, in most cases, Hecaton could generate a complete bonnet. In other cases that it doesn't, on average, we needed to manually add two to three statements to the bonnets ourselves. We saw that Hecaton could not always generate the complete bonnets. However, our experiments on 30 real kernel bugs show that for all the bugs that Hecaton reports a confidence score above 50, the bonnets are complete, so researchers or analysts that want to work on these bugs if they choose can avoid incomplete bonnets that require manual effort.
One has a very lightweight and at a negligible performance overhead. Especially in practice, we only need to instrument one or two buggy functions with bonuts. However, to measure the overhead of bonuts, we instrument several hundreds of systems functions with bonuts and execute them. Even in this case, we can see that the performance overhead is still not noticeable. Bonuts also ease the problem of repetitive reboots of fuzzing. As a result, in a Bonuts instrumented driver, the fuzzer executed far more programs than the baseline. This also results in better code coverage and finding bugs faster. Our solution is not perfect and has a few limitations. Bonuts do not work on bugs that are already in cleanup paths such as free functions. We need to manually inspect and verify the function per database and the effectiveness of bonus relies on kernel sanitizer to catch bugs before they grow up the kernel. There are also other works focused on automatic fault recovery. We already mentioned the drawbacks of code disabling. Compared to bonus, checkpointing solution suffers from high overhead and they have limited support for I.O. and device driver recovery solutions require high engineering effort. In summary, we presented bonus. Workaround for kernel box, bonus, undo the in-flight syscall that triggers the bug, they maintain the functionality of the system, even when bugs are triggered, bonus are applicable to many kernel bugs, they do not cause noticeable performance overhead, and with Hackathon you can generate them automatically. Thank you all for your attention. If you have further questions, please do not hesitate to contact me on my email, and Hackathon is open source in the following link. Thank you.